my name is Ted Lind. I am a board member uh, with the uh, Annapolis Region Community Arts Council, also known as Arts Place. And I'm pleased to be here tonight with you all. We're here to talk to Lorna Mulligan, uh, who's the artist that's currently exhibiting in our main gallery here at Arts Place. Uh, her exhibition of Water and Rock is spectacular. I've been sitting in this gallery, you pardon the echo, but I am in the gallery space, which I thought would be nice to do. Uh, so I'm gonna just, I think, turn it over to Lorna and she'll give you a little bit of a story of her background and what inspires her and all that good stuff. So um, uh, take it away, Lorna. <laughs> so hello, everybody. And uh, before I get, uh, get going, I wanted to just say thank you to Arts Place Gallery uh, for this, this opportunity. Thank you, Ted. And, and I want to say thank you to Sophie uh, for the work that she's done and, and hanging the show. I haven't seen the show yet. It'll be a couple of weeks before I see it, but for the photos that I've seen so far, um, really it's, it's how I envision the, the show. So I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, yeah, before I get going, I've got a, a few images to show um, and, uh, and I'll, I'll just talk along with that. Um, probably it's going to be about more about the inspiration for the show, how it evolved, because uh, it's a body of work that's been going for hmm, quite some time. Um, and uh, so you'll, you'll hear me talking about some of that, uh, about that stuff. Um, and then after we'll have some questions. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a show about water and rock. Um, and it's not, it, it's coastal landscapes, um, abstract, gestural, um, but not traditional seascapes. Mind you, the, 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 the beginning, the germ of the show does start with, clearly it starts with those coastal locations, not just one place, but uh, a number of different places that I have Explored. I'm from the West Coast originally, so I'm I'm a, I'm a Pacific Ocean uh, person, but have lived here for for a very long time, and it's um, it's the Atlantic that this this body of work is about. This is is just the, the picture of my my palette, my little palette. I'll talk about that as well. But uh, I love how the landscapes and the colors that we're using they become their own paintings just in the palette as, as we work. Um, so it starts always with plein air, with sketching and that kind of very, very immediate um, painting and sketching on site. And I've, I have often gone, well, it started in Nova Scotia because I've often gone back to, to Cape Breton in the summer, that kind of thing, usually the same place. Um, and so the image on the left, you see me painting um, just on the rocks. And that's kind of my usual setup. I travel very light. So I'll just walk around with a little bag, my palette and just a board, you know, the paper clip to it. The middle image is me walking um, in Newfoundland. So that's kind of where this body of work came from, where it's looking at the farthest area of Newfoundland. And then I had uh, an artist residency in, in Cornwall, the most westerly tip. And I really like this book ending um that happened and I, I thought well what about the the visual echoes that can can happen looking at coastal landscape from both sides of the Atlantic and just see see what happens with this so a water and rock is about the geographical location it's about the process there's a lot of pigments rock there is water in the watercolor in that process. And there's, there's you know, just in, in the materials as well. Uh, a lot of what I'm working with is 
watercolor, ink, and acrylics occasionally in the studio, um, on paper mostly. And uh, I often will work with handmade paper. Handmade paper takes an awful lot of water to, to do it. And I've, I've made a lot of handmade paper and most of what I've worked with here is, is from uh, Saint Armand and Saint Gilles, the local, local paper makers here in Quebec. And along this whole trip that's gone back and forth across the Atlantic is my little paint box. And this I've had since I was early teens. And it's kind of become a companion that uh, I've, it, you know, goes back and forth. And um, I've painted the in, I've resurfaced the inside of it a number of times. Anyway, so that's part of that. This is a piece that's in the show. And it's one of the few plein air pieces um, because very often when I, when I am walking along coastal landscapes, these locations, I will stop and paint or draw. Um, but very often the, the rest of the work happens in the studio. So this, as I say, is one of the, the few. It was part of a series, um, Walking the Coast. And the other ones that are, that are in the gallery are a little accordion fold um, artist book that has images from both sides of the Atlantic in there. So in an image like this, I, I would just stop at the where I am and I'm not doing any drawing first. It's going directly with water and the paint, very immediate and capturing that, that kind of feeling. So this is St. Alma paper. Here we have uh, an image of the, of the gallery and the big piece. Uh, so this is the wall that I, I, I quite, I'm quite pleased with, with how this worked out. There are nine panels, so nine big pieces of paper, watercolor paper that I've shaped and uh, assembled. The piece is called Looking Into Water. And it's, it, you know, three meters wide. So that's like nine and a half feet. Um, pretty big for watercolor. And um, so you can see already that I'm not, it's not an image of a seascape. It is looking into water. And the, the whole process and imagery combine quite nicely in that. Um, on the plinths, you see some of the artist books and on the other wall, one of my drawings. So we'll get back to the, the big piece, looking into water. Here's how I paint. I paint on the floor. So that's in my studio, cement floor. I put plastic down and, and then I'm painting on my shaped pieces. So that paintbrush there is about, I think it's about five and a half inches wide. And uh, so it's watercolor, pigments, and lots of water going into this. Now, the whole part of the looking at the coastal landscape, it's, it's about edges. And these edges are also, they're not just the geographical edges, um, there's the whole conceptual aspect of, of what is an edge, what's that transition or crossing over. And in watercolor, we work a lot with edges, something called lost and found edges. Also the fact of um, the edges and negative space, what is the preserving the white and what is positive, what is negative. So I play, I actually just play a lot with that. Um, but so when I'm painting, um, you know, I'm able to, I'm able to walk around or move around the image uh, because it's on the floor. It's not like working on an easel or on a desk. It's a, it's a very different kind of experience. Just find my cursor, there we go. <laughs> All right, this is uh, the other 
big piece that's in, in the exhibition, uh, diptych called Seeking Balance and Footholds. And this is, um, this is watercolor paper, it's not handmade paper. And these are so 30 by 40 inch uh, each one. And um, watercolor, pigments, ink, gesso. Oops, so very mixed media, um, this, this type of image. Again, painted on the floor. And this is about, about the experience of being um, at, at the ocean. So you get to see little, little glimpses of, hmm, it looks like a landscape, but then not. So it's a little bit of, a, of a, we're, not, we're not at a stable kind of footing on this. I'm not allowing you to, to see just a, a seascape. So that brings you back to the surface of the paper and the, and the paint and the, um, the actual process that's involved there, the painting of it. So in a sense, it's about the experience. It's about the experience of being at that place where, or at many of these places, the memory that we have of clambering along the rocks and climbing up those cliffs and really being at that edge where you're between stasis and, and something very, very unstable. Um, so the, the instability of, of water that's there. And I, I hope that the, the kind of rock aspect and the swirling movement that's in here um, really conveys that. And I do give you a, a horizon line up there as well. And, and I've left, you know, this, these are big paintings. There's a lot of the black ink is there. Um, these ones don't have any text in them, but there is always that calligraphic movement, uh, the gestural brush movement. And uh, so that you'll see in much more calligraphic stuff in, in the artist books and also in this piece. Um, so when I'm looking at text, I do a lot of writing and if I'm incorporating text, which I often do, the question that I, I pose to myself is, am I wanting it legible or not? Is it part of the imagery or is it the message that I'm wanting that to be very clear? Uh, this is a drawing, observing nature, classification of waves. And it's about um, just sitting on the beach and watching the waves coming in as they're breaking. And I just had a sketchbook and I, I, I drew each one, trying to capture that fleeting movement and seeing how is that working? What's going on there? So at one point I had, you know, many, many, many lines, pen, just pencil lines in my sketchbook. And I thought, well, it looks like, it looks like its own kind of writing. Um, there, there was a, a movement in the, in the breaking waves as they came towards me that, that felt like a, a gestural kind of writing. So back in the studio, I'm looking at that idea and thinking, what can I do with that? Um, I have a, a chunk of, of indigo from Morocco. And, um, and I thought, well, if I get that wet, I can draw with it. So I'm using a chunk of, of dried pigment and using that to, to do this drawing in between of, of each wave, in between the text. Um, so it's from memory and from my little scribbles of, of writing as I saw the waves coming in. Uh, I think in the artist books, you see, um, for the most part, the text, when I'm using text there, it's legible, quite clearly marked. Where you'll see in, uh, other text that probably you maybe even weren't aware of it is in, um, there's a series of four paintings, uh, periodic disturbances about climate change, about weather, 
about the effect of what's happening with the oceans. And so I've written into those images uh, as I was painting and uh, just stream of consciousness kind of stuff, some of my writings, but that becomes the gestural movement in some of those. Okay, this is a plan. This is what I'm going to be doing when I'm there um, for the two weeks as artist in residence. So I've made myself a box, a portable studio, and another box which has my papers in it. And I'm going to be encountering the landscape around Annapolis Royal and seeing what happens with that. So for the moment, I'm thinking it's going to be mostly ink, black, bit of color, and uh, I'll, I'm just open to seeing what that experience will, will give. But I thought, well, I'll, I'll make sure that I have my materials and, and um, I do book binding and artist books. So I, I quite enjoy just making this, this is my plan. And here is the uh, another shot of the gallery where we see that back wall, the painted wall with the big painting on the plinths or some of the, uh, the books, which I like them being presented like that, standing up, they're very sculptural. So, um, you know, they can be manipulated and seen from either side, but they really become something that, um, that opens out or that has an inside and an outside. There's the big diptych. Um, there's a small series of, of paintings or drawings on black paper. There's another painting, which is a watercolor on wood. And uh, that's, there's a lot of ink on that one as well. And then we start to see some of the smaller framed pieces. So those little ones in the wooden frames those are the smallest paintings that are in the show. And hmm, the image area is probably like two and a half inches square. So they are little, I don't know, watery worlds or color, blue color bombs. They are called bits of blue. And uh, so that's the, we go from two and a half inches to nine and a half feet uh, in, this, in this exhibition. I do a lot of writing, as I said, and I and I um, I like lists. So very often when I'm walking, um, it'll be about what I'm observing. So I might have lists that talk about the weather, the plants, um, what I see. You know that we were talking about the birds and that kind of thing. Very much um, the environment that I'm in. And, uh, and I find that back in the studio helps. Lorna, yeah. you, I can tell that you you use words a lot because some of the expressions, I, I had to take notes while you were talking and I, I just love the, um, the idea of, uh, of the color bombs. <laughs> Memory and scribbles. Memory yes. and scribbles really stands, stands out. The, the instability of water. And uh, this, is, this is just wonderful language. And mm. it really enhances the experience of the, of the paintings here. And, and I, I had to, the, the book ending idea is marvelous. And I had to think that, I think way back millions of years ago, the, the co East Coast of Canada must have been connected. The whole Pangea thing, yes, absolutely, yeah. All connected. So, did you see some similarities in the rocks? In the rocks, for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's some pretty amazing connections that are there, and uh, yeah. Well, that's a marvelous notion. I love the idea of that, and that, that makes you have really deep thoughts when you come into the space. <laughs> you know, the eternity of rocks and water. Yeah, and yet. Um, I was very much aware of um, erosion of other things that are happening with, with those edges, um, yeah. you know, and um, in some of these places, how 
Well, for sure, you have you have areas where the sands get shifted and there's more of a, a beach that happens in one area and, and that that is is constantly going on. But and and we like to think of of rock and water, that edge being very, it's very calm, it's very stable, nothing moves. It's always in movement. And uh, yeah. Other questions? Mm hmm yes. Sherry and? And Doug. Yeah. Yes, my question, uh, I would like to know how you approach the hard edges that you get on your white spaces. Uh, do you just do that using your paint and the white color of the paper only? Mm hmm mm hmm I do. And it's part of it is um, sculpting with the brush and also so really sort of carving out spaces and um and just being able to go back and forth in your head <laughs> um you know watercolor is a little bit like that and, and thinking of negative space you're you're always do, doing that flip-flop um and I, I love that. I think it's a it's a it's a it's a nice play, um, and maybe that's why I, I like those edges as well. But yeah, go ahead. I've noticed that um, in your work at showing in the gallery right now, there seems to be a little less emphasis on calli uh, calligraphy in and of itself. Mm -hmm. It's more um, subsumed by the rock and the water and the landscapes. And I wondered if you're still part of that calligraphy group in Montreal, or have you moved away? Um, well, it, it kind of disbanded. Um, okay. And um, so we're, we are still um, friends and whatnot, but to, mm -hmm. it, as a collective, it, it, no, it's no longer. Oh, okay. Okay. We, we were together for 12 years, yep. uh, produced a book and uh, a number of different exhibitions. Um, and, and we are all still exploring ink okay. uh, in, in different ways, but um, yeah, and, and so I, I do still do uh, traditional calligraphy mm -hmm. and, and teach it, um, but in my own work very often it's, it's, um, it shows up more in the books, I would say. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. In terms of legible text, yeah, Flora. Yes, I yeah, I found it in, intriguing um, that you're using a chunk of indigo because I have a chunk of indigo that I've been dragging around for twenty years, not knowing really what to do with it. So, how do you use it for drawing? Uh, I softened it in some water. Yes, and and then took the chunk and drew with it. <laughs> I wonder if you can put a fixative on that afterwards. I mean, if you were integrating it into um, well, a, a, a acrylic, for instance, if you oh, could put a varnish. Yeah, maybe, it. maybe, probably could. Um, mine, because it was directly on the paper and was done wet, mm -hmm. um, it, it sunk into the paper enough. It, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Sherry, I'll go back to you. I'm just wondering about your the planning that goes into your work. For example, the big nine foot piece. You say you don't do any drawing. You just go straight at it with your uh, watercolor and tool. Um, I do. What I do is I do thumbnail sketches. So mm -hmm. I will do um, composition type of thing. So for that one, it was. My thumbnail sketch, and they're usually really tiny, they're, they're little, little things, um, was just planning out that I wanted to have multiple panels divided with a, some kind of structure that would, that we feel that maybe we, we are looking through a window or we, there's, a, there's something between us and the water, the painting. Um, mm. So that's the panels are separated by, you know, you see the wall in three places. Um, other than that, I kind of just thought of areas where I wanted it dark, where I wanted a 
sort of a bit more of a, a mass of color or value, darker value. Mm -hmm. And then I just go in mm -hmm. and then I just start. And your the shape of your papers, did you tear that paper? I tore it, yeah, I tore it. And did you tear it before you started or? I did. Before. before. Okay. Yeah. Sort of before and during. Yeah. All right. Okay, Deb. My, my question just is, uh, I was wondering, is lifting color part of your process or is strictly adding color to your canvas? I do lift off for sure, um, mm -hmm. but not in the way that we do in traditional watercolor. Um, but but if if an area gets you know too colored, I I will right away lift some lift some off and and brighten it up because mm -hmm. you're always thinking of the white of yes. the paper. Another thing that I do occasionally is um, I work with gesso. Have you noticed that? And and I work with it in a non traditional way. Um, for its texture and for, uh, I like the surprises that it gives me. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll take a piece of paper, put some gesso here and there, let it dry, then paint on it. And you get wonderful surprises <laughs> in the textures. Um, basically it's creating a barrier so the paper doesn't absorb the same way. Right. So mm -hmm. does the paint lift off then? How do you, because it's a- It can, paint, right? it can in a way. So it's not like working on UPO or any of those uh, oh, yeah. polymer substrates, but it is, um, you know, because it is, is an acrylic and it has a barrier. Um, yeah, you if you make an error or want to change something, mm -hmm. um, you can lift off a bit easier in those spaces. But the downside on that is that it takes longer to dry. Um, you don't get as intense colors. The darks aren't as intense because right. it hasn't absorbed the same way. Yeah. But it, the, and what I what I like there in doing that, and I don't always do it, but occasionally I will, is the um, the randomness. I, I do like. Um, starting with just jumping in, just jump in, in the water, poof. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. that, that random aspect, and then I will respond to that. Mm -hmm. and, and that really helps me. And then, and then I've got a dialogue going and I can go from there with my process. Yeah, Helen. Um, you also mentioned the word pigment. As you can tell, I'm not that familiar with that. I know the word, but I'm just wondering what consistency that is. What is what uh, what is a, what is the ingredient? Okay. You, thank you. Um, I I do because I, I come from a part of my background is with the calligraphy and that very traditional aspect of illumination and all of that. I've, done that, um, we work with pigments. So we're working with powdered ground earth colors. That's mostly what I'm working with. And I will, I will grind it with a muller. So it's, it's you know, swooshed. <laughs> and, and then you add, uh, so basically what I'm doing is making um, a, a watercolor paint with it. So I'm adding gum Arabic into that and creating a, a texture. So the colors are pretty intense, vibrant, and I can take them to the consistency that I want. Um, I'm very careful though, only working with earth colors like that, ultramarine blue maybe sometimes, um, but I'm, I'm not wanting to go, some of these pigments are quite toxic, um, not going near any cobalts or cadmiums or anything like that. Um, but I, I do like exploring the consistency. So I would say it's mostly if you see pigments in my work, it might be in the browns, the ochres, those kind of colors. 
And pigment is goes with water. Yeah, water, or well, you can take it, you could make oil, oil paints with it, oh. sand oil and stuff, but it is the the ground earth, if you will. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's nice because water and rock, you know, it is definitely, again. Water and rock. Water and rock. Wrap things up here, and I yep. want to remind everyone that, uh, that Lorna will be here for two weeks, and uh, I assume that during your time here, there will be some public hours where people mm -hmm. can talk to you, see what yeah. you're up to in the yeah. studio upstairs. Yeah, with my box. See how the, the portable studio is going along. <laughs> yeah, we have, have a nice uh, studio space upstairs that you'll oh, be good. able to use as well. So um, Perfect. Looking forward to that. And, and again, thank you all for participating tonight. And thank you, Lorna, especially. It, it was really uh, stimulating to hear you talk about your work and uh, uh, I, I, you know, just sitting here in the gallery is, is enough of an experience. <laughs> it's nice because we can see the tiny little, the little uh, color bombs there behind you. It'll be great to be able to see you here in the space. And uh, I know you're going to enjoy your time here in Annapolis. Mm, I'm sure. Yeah. Thank you all. Good night and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, Lorna. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. My pleasure.